Hello and welcome. I want to do a little follow up video to yesterday's video, uh, which involved this piece of wood and this glass dish and some water that you can see on the screen at the moment. So the purpose of yesterday's video was to demonstrate that density uh, cannot replace gravity as an explanation for the observations that we make in the real world. So flat earthers and some other people like to claim that gravity doesn't exist and that the observation of things falling towards the earth or moving towards the earth or floating away into uh, the sky or onto the surface of the ocean or a lake or whatever, that these things are all explained if you simply know the density of the, uh, the object and the density of the medium in which the object is located. And this simple observation of a piece of wood floating in water um, demonstrates that density is, does not explain, or relative density does, cannot explain what we actually observe. The piece of wood is less dense than the water. I'll show you that in a moment. And therefore, according to the, uh, the, the model that the flat earthers like to use, um, the wood should rest on the surface of the water. The less dense object should rest on the surface of a more dense object. But this is not what we actually observe. The wood actually is uh, sitting uh, partially submerged in the water. Roughly half of the piece of wood is below the surface of the water. And I would suggest that this simple observation uh, is sufficient for us to reject relative density as being an explanation for what we actually observe in reality. So we need another alternative explanation. Now, first of all, let's confirm that the piece of wood is indeed less dense than water. So to do this, I simply uh, measured the weight and the volume or the mass and the volume of the piece of wood. So its mass, as you can see on these kitchen scales, is 130 grams. The volume is, uh, it, in one direction is 12 centimetres, second direction is 14 and a half centimetres, third direction is one and a half centimetres, giving us a total volume of 261 uh, cubic centimeters. So the density is given by the mass divided by the volume, which gives us 0 0.5 cubic, uh, grams per cubic centimeter. The density of water is known to be one gram per cubic centimeter. So the wood is less dense than the water. So according to the, a relative density model, or my understanding of it, the, the wood should sit on the surface of the water, not be partially submerged in the water. Now, if a flat earther wants to, or anybody else wants to explain uh, how in terms of purely of density, uh, this observation can be uh, can be explained, then please be my guest, uh, use the comments section below and uh, and we can have uh, you know, uh, a look at that and consider whether you're right or not. What I want to show you now is that the accepted scientific explanation based on the uh, on gravity explains this observation absolutely perfectly. So what uh, the scientific explanation for this observation would be is that there is a gravitational force, and let's not argue about whether gravita gravity is a real force or not. It behaves as if it's a real force, so we'll call it a force for the purposes of today's video. Uh, there's a gravitational force uh, acting downwards on the, uh, on the piece of wood. Now, I shouldn't use the word downwards, What's happening is the piece of wood is being uh, um, attracted towards the Earth's center of mass, and the Earth's center of mass is being attracted towards the wood's center of mass. And there's a gravitational force 
that measures that attraction. In addition to that, there is a buoyancy force. Buoyancy force being caused by the uh, amount of water that is displaced by the piece of wood. And it's displaced because the gravitational force is pulling it down into the water. And when those two forces are exactly the same, then the amount of upwards push from buoyancy and the amount of downwards push from gravity are, are exactly matched. Uh, are acting in opposite directions, and so the piece of wood remains stationary and comes to rest at this point. So can we measure what the forces should be here and show that they are indeed the same? Well, we can get pretty close to it. So we use Newton's equation for gravity because it works very well for objects of this sort of size and the object the size of the Earth is fine. Um, it does break down a little bit when things get extremely big or extremely small. Uh, but for this pur purpose, it works fine. And we have the following terms. The force of gravity is equal to gravitational constant, which is a constant, a fixed number, multiplied by the mass of one object, the mass of the second object, so that's the mass of our piece of wood, multiplied by the mass of the Earth, and all divided by the distance between the center of mass of those two objects which in this case is uh, going to be very close to the average uh, radius of the Earth. So we can plug some numbers into the equation, the gravitational constant, the mass of our piece of wood in kilograms, because the constant is uses the units of kilograms and meters, as well as Newtons. Uh, so in kilograms, we are 130 grams, which is 0.13 kilograms. And the mass of the Earth is this very large number of kilograms. And then we have this square of the radius of the Earth in meters, keeping our units the same here. When we crunch those numbers, uh, we get a value for the gravitational force of 1.27689 newtons. Now, can we estimate the buoyancy force at play here? Well, we can't get an accurate measurement. I haven't measured the, uh, the displacement of the water uh, accurately. I'd need a special container to do that. Um, but we can get a pretty good estimate. So the buoyancy force is given by this equation over here on the left of the screen, uh, where we have the density of the medium multiplied by the volume of medium that is displaced by our object and the uh, little g gravity, the acceleration, if you like, or the force due to gravity. And if we plug the numbers in, we know that water has a density of one kilogram per liter. Um, the volume of water displaced will be uh, 130 cubic centimetres, that is roughly half the volume of the piece of wood. Okay, so you can see that this is roughly halfway up the piece of wood, so roughly half the volume of the piece of wood is displaced. It, it, it's below the surface of the water and displacing the water. So 130 uh, um, cubic centimetres or 0.13 litres of water displaced and multiplied by uh, the value for gravity on Earth, which is uh, 9.81 metres per second squared, or in this case, we're using newtons per kilogram because those are the units that we're working in. And when we crunch those numbers, we get a buoyancy force of 1.275 newtons. Now, remember, we only estimated the uh, displaced volume here, judging by I how much of the uh, water is displaced. And uh, I think we got pretty close because the 
two forces are almost exactly equal. And I'm sure that if we had the accurate value for the water displaced, the forces would be indeed exactly equal. So we have an equal force uh, trying to move the uh, wood up towards the surface of the water and a, an equal gravitational force trying to pull it down towards the centre of the earth. And those forces balance out and the piece of wood comes to rest. If you increase the mass of the piece of wood without altering its density, then it will move. Uh, the, the gravitational force now will be greater. This will uh, push it down into the water, displacing more water, increasing the buoyancy force until the two again uh, match each other and the piece of wood comes to rest. And this is exactly what was observed in the video that I published yesterday. So we can see that density and relative density do not explain the observations that we make. And the explanation in terms of gravity and buoyancy do explain perfectly the observations that we make in reality. And the way science works is if you make an observation or perform an experiment where um, your, uh, the outcome of that uh, observation or experiment uh, agrees with your uh, your hypothesis or your theory or your, your explanation, then you become more confident that your explanation is correct. And if it disagrees with your, your explanation, then you should reject your explanation. And so on the basis of this single observation, then we can reject the relative density uh, explanation uh, unless someone can um, come up with a, a, a refinement, if you like, of the relative density explanation, which, uh, which does explain this observation, in which case we go on to further testing to see whether it uh, matches all observations. So I look forward to reading uh, some comments, hopefully from some flat earthers or some uh, gravity deniers, that uh, some explanations of how relative density can explain this observation. <coughs> if I've made any errors in my calculations, I'm sure someone will let me know. Um, and I'm quite happy to um, to look into any, any, any errors that I might have made. And uh, thank you for watching. And I look forward to reading your comments.